Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. This is on Be Tricked by Fraud, tips for keeping your money safe. Um, as you know, there's a chat section section on your screen. If you have any questions during this presentation or you would like to make a comment, please feel free to drop, drop a comment, a, a question or anything into the chat box and we will try to have it addressed during the session. All right, let's get the show going. There we go. So fraud prevention. Fraudsters cost businesses and consumers billions every year. Our goal at the credit union is to do our very best to protect our members from becoming victims of fraud um, by educating them on ways that they can protect themselves. So this is just one way during this presentation, um, you know, that we can try to reach out um, to give you the information on how to protect yourself. We want the best for our members. Um, Taylor, you want to do this slide? Uh, basic tips to keep your money safe. Don't give out personal information. So don't give out your account number, the routing number, anything with your account. Um, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. <laughs> Sign up for alerts. Um, be smart with your passwords. Use different passwords. Don't write them down. Don't keep them in your wallet. Um, never give your passwords to anyone. Legitimate banks and stores will not ask for that information. Um, if you do not know them, don't deal with them. A great way to verify information is to check with the Better Business Bureau. So um, I'm just going to piggyback on um, what Taylor said, and you can jump in, feel free. Um, you know, of course, there's some personal information that, especially dealing with the credit union or your bank or whatever, um, you know, you're going to have to give out to identify yourself, you know. Um, so, you know, within reason, you know, personal information, you don't want to just be throwing out your social security number. You don't want to just be throwing out your driver's license number, uh, you know, coupled with your date of birth and, you know, all these other um, things that uh, are tied to, you know, your credit, your money and that kind of thing. Um, again, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. You know, in this day and age, again, I say that, um, you know, scammers and fraudsters are, you know, they capitalize on whatever the hottest topic is or the hottest thing going is and use that to leverage your vulnerability. You know, it use that to, to try to trick you into believing that, you know, what they're saying is true. You know, when things happen, like we've seen a lot of this during the hurricane, you know, and they, people, they, people whenever disaster strikes, you know, you hear about it on the news, you know, um, send your donation to this number. If you want to donate money, um, you know, text this number to donate money to this charitable organization that you may have never heard of, or they call themselves um, an organization's name that's similar to a legitimate organization, you know, but really it's tied to somebody that's just taking money. Um, so it's really sad because especially during times like that, you want your money, if you're going to try to help somebody, you want it to be funneled through a legitimate organization. Um, but so many times people capitalize on the hurt of others to try to benefit financially from that. Um, sign up for alerts. You know, I know I can say I don't like my phone going off all the time, like with just random alerts for, you know, all kind of notifications from different apps and things like that. But be selective, you know, when choosing which notifications you want to receive alerts from, you definitely want to receive notifications from your financial institutions. So anything that's tied to your money, if you have an investment firm, you know, your credit union, if you have a bank, you know, you want to be able to receive alerts because you want to know what's going on. Your, your credit, if you have a um, credit sense or credit karma or something, some credit tracking app or credit uh, monitoring app, you want to be able to get alerts from those things in case something changes. You want to know what those changes are. So be selective, but definitely sign up for alerts um, when those options are provided to you to be able to do that. Um, be smart with your passwords. I, for one, am, that's a hard one for me because we have so many passwords that we have to, you know, remember we have work passwords, we have personal passwords, we have your phone password, you have your laptop, your desktop, you know, all these other electronics <laughs> and they all have different, you know, passwords and different um, um, requirements for the passwords, which is all good things. So um, I say that, and I was kind of talking to both sides of my mouth when I say that, because it's really good that they do, but it's really hard to do sometimes because you feel like you run out of passwords. Um, but be smart. So if you, there's, um, 
I was just talking with an IT guy, I think on yesterday. And so there's these password keepers, basically like an app that you can put on your phone that kind of that, that kind of houses all of your passwords for you. Um, so I'm in the process myself of trying to do that because I'm not good with passwords. Um, so you may want to look into something like that, you know, because as again, as technology gets um, more advanced and scammers come behind and, you know, get more advanced as well. You know, these companies, they, some of these companies do try to protect you like your financial institutions and make it harder for you to make your password uh, requirements harder. So it's harder for people to figure it out, um, which in the, which in turn, you have to come up with a harder password that you have to remember. So, <laughs> so but again, it's all in an effort to keep you safe. So um, make your passwords um, difficult to guess, you know, um, there's all different types of things you can do, uppercase, lowercase. Um, you know, different symbols that you can add. So just try to do a variety of those things and keep your passwords safe wherever you store them to remember them. Don't give your passwords out to anyone. Um, if you don't know them, don't deal with them. Of course, that's, that is within reason. Um, and you can always call the Better Business Bureau. Or another thing you can do is just look them up. You know, if you have access to Google, the internet, like you can always search a company name. And a good point um, that you that can like to add with that is to add, you know, Whatever you look up, add scam on the end or add um, reviews to the end of whatever you're looking up because that'll it'll return a search return that may um, reveal, you know, that such and such is a scam or there's some reviews that you'll be able to read that let you know what happened when other people dealt with this company. So add risk, add scam, add review to the end of your search if you're searching a company, okay? Um, tips on protecting your personal information, um, and we can kind of go through these together, but um, don't carry your social security card in your wallet. Some of us are guilty of doing that. You should not do that. Um, don't share your personal information, you know, unless it's absolutely necessary. Uh, store personal information in a safe place. You want to take some, Taylor? Shred all information, important documents before throwing it in the trash. Um, Definitely in my house, we have a little shredder. Any mail that's junk mail, we shred it because we don't want people knowing our address, knowing where we live, knowing our names. Um, that's already too much information. So if it's anything that's important, definitely shred it. Um, create very strong passwords that are not easily guessed. So you don't want to put your dog's name with your birth date in an exclamation point. That's really easy to break. Um, I'm going to do capital letters, lowercase letters, uh, multiple um, numbers and multiple um, special characters. Yep, um, so use all the security features on your phone. So we usually have our phone with us all the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know, if it, if it offers biometrics like face, facial recognition, thumbprint and a phone and a, like a four digit or six digit code, like use that. Make it hard for people to hurt you. Make it harder for people to, you know, uh, invade your privacy, invade your personal space. Um, sometimes it's a pain in the butt, you know, when you got to do all these things, but at least you know you're taking all the appropriate measures or the available measures to keeping your information sa safe. Our phones know more about us than we probably know that they know about us. <laughs> um, so you want to do as much as you can to protect your assets and to protect the things that hold your personal information. Um, Check your bank accounts and your credit cards frequently to ensure that all the transactions are yours. You know, look at your transactions. Make sure that you did spend, you know, $75.25 at Walmart or at, you know, a hotel that you may have recently stayed at or wherever, a dining, a restaurant that you went to. Um, just make sure that those places are things that you remember, especially if you... Um, if you deal with a lot of like local small businesses, sometimes, you know, the name of the company won't come up, but it may be the individual's name. You know, make sure that you can associate that business name to that person or that business name to that DBA name um, or that something is recognizable there. So just make sure that I always say the words and the music go together. Make sure that the amount that they charged you was the amount that the amount that you paid was what they charged you and that kind of thing. Um, if you suspect that you've become a victim of identity theft, a few things you can do. You can report um, identity theft to the Federal Trade Commission online at identitytheft.gov or by calling the number 1-877-483-4338. Um, and then you should all, if you feel like you've been or you know that you've been a victim of identity theft, you, theft, 
you want to freeze your credit files. So um, I believe I'm saying this correctly. If you freeze it with Equifax, it will freeze it on all the other bureaus as well. But make sure you contact those bureaus, um, Equifax, TransUnion, Experian, um, and let them know that you have been a victim of identity fraud, identity, identity theft, and um, they will take the proper measures. Let them know you want to freeze your credit, um, and that will prevent someone from applying or getting approved under your name um, and further hurting you. So freezing your credit is a great way to prevent further damage from happening. Okay. So phizing, smishing, vishing, these are all funny words <laughs> that are tied to things that are not so funny. So, um, so phishing, smishing, and vishing <laughs> are all attempts for people to trick you into providing your personal or your financial information through email, text, or over the phone. Um, they also utilize social media sites to solicit personal information. So if any time you receive, you know, an unsolicited email, or, you know, random text message, which I've received them myself before, um, you know, asking you to verify your information. Um, I get these emails all the time. Your account has been frozen. Um, you know, your account is locked. You're going to have to do this and this to unlock your account. A lot of times what you can do is click on the, um, the name for the person, like it may say PayPal or whatever. If you click it, the email address is associated with it. It's like a whole bunch of letters, numbers, and things that have nothing to do with the company. So you can always tell if it's a, you can, most of the time, you can always tell if it's a legitimate email address that's tied to the company or not. Um, ATM skimming. So um, sophisticated people out there who seek to harm people take a lot of time. They build these devices that they go out to um, <clears throat> the other ATMs that may be in um, discreet locations or like, you know, not, or maybe like out in the middle of nowhere, or they could be centrally located ATMs. And they install these really sophisticated devices or pieces of equipment on the ATM that's legitimate ATM that's there. And when you go to use it, it when you go to swipe your card, it's actually taking your information and like sending it over to these people who um, will attempt to fraud you. So, um, um, the next slide is going to actually show you kind of what skimmers look like on ATMs. So I know that because I know that this exists, when I go to use an ATM, I'll take time like to like pull on the little thing and like just kind of touch on the, the, the number pad and stuff to make sure that like nothing's loose and it's not like a cover on it or it's not any additional um, piece of equipment that's been manually put there. So I will do that before I put my card in, kind of tug on the little card swiper to see if, you know, if it's loose or something. Um, that's just something that you could do and it's worth it, you know, because we've found um, ATMs around here, even in Lake Charles that have skimmers that have been installed on them. So, um, you know, take the time before you swipe your card to touch on that ATM, you know, um, press on the number pad, you know, see if you can see like a lift between the, you know, the machine and the number pad where it looks like something's been installed or even where you put your card, you know, maybe like see if you can touch it, if it feels like there's a cover on it or something like that. Um, that's all signs that maybe you not, you might not want to use that ATM. Um, they also do that to gas pumps. Um, so I always will go inside to pay for my gas. But if it's nighttime and you just can't go inside, do shake it like Makito was saying, because um, you can feel if it is that they put something on there or not. Yep, so gas stations... Um, I didn't think about that, but yep, going, you know, utilizing the gas station, um, the card swiper, you know, sometimes we're in a rush, you know, you just want to kind of hurry up and scammers and people who look to hurt you know that that's the behavior you're going to do. They know that, you know, you're, you're probably just going to be running in and out. You you know, you need to hurry up and fill up gas. So you're going to quickly put your card in. You're not going to check that machine. So, um, and, you know, around the holidays, like they know that people are spending money. They know that people are out and about more. They know that people are going to ATMs more to get cash. These are the times like to be vigilant about that. So um, take that extra two or three seconds to touch on that ATM, you know, and try to use ATMs that are, uh, if you can, you know, the ones that are located at your financial institution. Um, because sometimes they go into these, um, not to say you can't use one at a gas station or anything like that, but, you know, ones that may not have as much traffic, 
you know, because they just need to, you know, to scam a couple of people, you know. So ones that don't have a lot of traffic, they probably have the time to go in and like install their stuff and they know that people aren't really watching, um, you know, not paying a lot of attention. So anyway, try to use the ones that maybe um, are located at your financial institution, the ones that are at your credit union or at your bank. Um, Because of course there's cameras and things like that, that, you know, we'll be able to hopefully see that. Um, Fraudulent checks and transfers, despite a decline in check usage, because a lot of people are going to, of course, your debit cards, check usage and fraud are like, they kind of go hand in hand now. Um, So they're very active for fraudsters. And so they use checks to lure you or to um, persuade you to send them money or to persuade, excuse me, persuade you that you've won money. Um, A lot of times they're associated with lottery winnings, with work from home offers or other targeted scams. So um, they'll send you like a check in the mail, They'll contact you and say, um, you know, you won this lottery or you won this publisher's clearinghouse thing. And, you know, nine times out of 10, you didn't win that. So, you know, did you apply for that sweepstakes? Um, you know, did you did you send anything back? You know that you didn't have any dealings with this before. So like, you know, oh, you just picked me out of the millions of people in the world <laughs> to win, you know, you shouldn't have. <laughs> so anyway, um, so fraudulent checks and transfers, you know, they'll try to get you to, you know, transfer money or they'll try to send you a check and tell you to deposit it and just weird stuff like that, um, that, you know, if you know that you did not have any um, ties to this program, you didn't apply for any sweepstakes, um, you know, if you're looking for a work from home offer, like you shouldn't have to send them money to work. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the um, webinar of compromised mobile devices. So um, again, with your mobile devices, it's important to keep them safe. Um, Make sure that you're downloading apps from trusted sources, Um, you know, that you're downloading the correct app for your financial institution or just any other apps that are out there. Like people who commit fraud, they make apps too, you know, (laughs) and whether it's tied to a game or some kind of investment scheme or something like that. You wanna look those things up before you um, install them on your phone. And also when you're using public networks, like free Wi-Fi, you know, a lot of times they'll say this is an unsecured network, which means that people sometimes sit in the parking lot of the local Starbucks or the local restaurant or wherever and tap into their systems. Like, of course, people way smarter than me (laughs) who know how to do that kind of stuff. tap into these uh, uh, internet systems and wireless systems and your computer networks and figure out how to break passwords, how to steal your information once you're on their network. So um, just be mindful of that and uh, when you're using public networks and things like that. Okay, so we talked about ATM skimming a little bit earlier. These are just some images that we found of kind of what ATM skimming may look like um, and what some of these devices that they use uh, that they install kind of resemble. So as you can see, these are all like detachable things that they place over the realistic or the real um, functions of the ATMs. So this whole this whole board just kind of came off here with the with the keypad. The little thing where you slide your card, it's like a cover on top. And as you can see of the real and fake they've added an additional piece um, to the end of it. So sad that people do that, but this is just a little example of what um, skimming may look like. You wanna talk about debit debit card card? fraud? Um, Avoid using your debit card online. It's safer to use a credit card for online shopping. So I know on Facebook, they always have like these really cool um, ads like with makeup or these little cute shorts I like. So I always use my credit card just in case that I want it to affect my real money. Um, A credit card, you know, I can wait for that to be refunded to me. Um, Beware of sketchy ATMs. Try to use ATMs that are located at banks and credit unions. Cover your PIN number when inputting. Uh, So if someone's standing really close to you when you're checking out at the gas station, Walmart, or even typing in your ATM, um, be sure that you're covering it up. Um, Be sure they're not staring at you. you Back up a little. Mm -hmm. Um, Share your travel plans with your bank. 
you always want to let your bank know where you're going. Definitely if you're going out of the state, um, even if you're going to Texas, which is just right over the street, you know, but we still do have to let the banks know because we have a fraud department and they will stop our cards if we don't normally go to Texas. Um, so just let us know so that we can keep your card on. Um, and if it does get turned off, even though you do let us know, we have a phone number um, that you can call to turn it back on. Um, check your card activity regularly. Regularly. Yes, <laughs> regularly. Uh, so always check your bank account. Uh, I check my bank account at least once a day. Just to be sure that everything went through, it's just a good habit to get in. Be sure your insurance pulled. Sometimes it takes them a few days. Be sure that when you swiped your card, it did go through. Um, so it's just a good habit to be in. Yep. So um, we have a pretty robust fraud department or fraud company that we deal with. So a lot of times, sometimes our members will get upset because their card may get, um, you know, a fraud alert on it or the fraud department will call them because there was some unusual activity. And sometimes we know that that can be a pain. Yet, this is all in an attempt to keep you safe and to make sure that it was you, you know, that traveled to Austin, Texas, or it was you that went to Miami, Florida, or, you know, New Mexico or wherever. Um, we want to make sure that, you know, you did spend that money there and that was you spending your money and you didn't lose your debit card and somebody or somebody stole your number. Or, you know, we want to make sure that the activity on your card is legitimate and that it belongs to you. And if something comes up that doesn't, this seems out of the ordinary. And whether it's where you are or like how much money is being spent, um, we are going to like, you know, raise a flag to that. We want to make sure that you know what's going on with your card. Um, so, um, again, like Taylor said, if you're planning to travel, um, you can add a travel notification through your online banking um, on your phone and let us know or online. Just let us know, hey, I'm traveling, um, you know, out of town. I'm traveling out the country so that your car doesn't get um, hung up and that you can, you know, go about freely and, you know, enjoy yourself without the worries of if your cart's going to work. Um, because there is a chance that your cart may not work because, you know, we're not used to you being in Cozumel, Mexico or, you know, anywhere else. We're not used to you going there. Your car is not used to you being used there. So that's kind of a red flag. So just kind of let us know. Again, this is all in an attempt to help keep you safe. Don't be fooled by check fraud, unmasking common tricks and offers. So um, one of the things that I've learned putting this together and that one of the things we see um, actually come through the credit union from time to time. The next few slides are going to talk about things that we actually see that come through the credit union. Um, you know, it's mystery shopping. So I've actually seen ads and things like that um, on Facebook, you know, make money from home, um, you know, mystery shopping jobs, secret shopper jobs available, you know, earn all this money, earn free gift cards, things like that by going into businesses and, um, <clears throat> you know, and, and, you know, rating them and that kind of thing. And they want you to send them money up front for you to work. I've never had to pay to have a job, okay? <laughs> pay somebody else for me to work for them. So anyway, so things like that, you know, they want you to send them money up front. That is a serious red flag. Don't do that. Um, you shouldn't have to pay to have a job, if that makes sense. <laughs> you shouldn't be paying them for, for you to work. So anyway, it's uh, most always a scam. Don't pay to work. A scammer, they might send you a check and say, you know, it's for buying products, tell you to deposit that check, that check, and then wire the money back because you owe some taxes or some fees to another person. That is most clearly a scam. Um, and so you don't want to even, even get yourself caught in, caught uh, in that kind of thing, because this could be criminal activity. And once you involve yourself in it and become part of the scam, you could potentially have charges on you because you participated in the scam. Because then you the you know you deposit checks that are not good that don't actually um, checks that come back and the money's gone out of the account. We'll talk about that later. You know, and I look like you did it. It looks like it's your fault, which it may not have originated with you, and you were you know oblivious to it. But that's why you know just bottom line is don't do it. And when in doubt, you know, ask questions. Um, so they'll tell you, you know, like to send the money back and wire the money back or get like a Western Union or MoneyGram, that kind of, when they start asking for those kind of things, it's getting a little hairy. So, <laughs> you know, if it's starting to seem not right, then you're probably involved in a scam and you want to stop and, you know, notify 
um, the authorities are notified, the powers that be, your bank, the FTC, that you know this is happening to you. So, um, personal assistance. So people apply, get hired as personal assistants again, and they get a check and are told to use the money to buy gift cards to buy or buy equipment and supplies for a new client. And then they they get they use this money, they buy these gift cards, they cash these checks, and then. Once the bank eventually figures out that the check is a bad check, and that money's that you've already gotten gift cards for that money. So now it looks like you just tried to fraud the bank out of X amount of dollars. So now we're coming for you because <laughs> you cashed the check. So, uh, you know, it doesn't always seem fair. Um, that's why we try to educate you in advance and let you know, like, hey, this might not be something that you want to participate in. Um, and uh, car wrap details is something that we've been seeing a lot of here at the credit union. Um, I actually, I didn't participate in it, but I actually like looked into this like years and years ago. But, you know, they said like, you know, you could wrap your car and they would pay you like, I don't know if it was, I think it was monthly or weekly or something like a hundred dollars a week. And I'm thinking that'd be a car note, you know, like hundred dollars a week. And that's $400. That pay like a car note. This is like when I was in college, you know? So I'm thinking like, shucks, that'll pay for a car note, you know, uh, and people were getting involved in this thing. Um, again, and then they tell you to send money to people who don't exist, gift cards, you know, tie to all kinds of things like that. So don't get involved with car wrap, uh, decal, that kind of thing. You know, if you have questions, come talk to us, come ask about, you know, hey, do you know, have you seen this come through? Is this legit? We can help you to try to figure it out. Um, Claiming prizes, again, sweepstakes winners, you know, you're giving checks and then they tell you to send money to cover taxes, you know, and, and fees and things like that. Um, that's not how legitimate sweepstakes works. It doesn't work that way. Um, again, I don't know anybody who's ever won Publishers Clearinghouse. Uh, I, you know, I just, these things are more likely than not, unfortunately, probably not going to happen to any of us. Not to say that they don't happen, but we wish that they would be more common and more legitimate where you actually would win these millions and millions of dollars. Um, and perhaps there are some that are legitimate, yet they're probably few and far between. Um, so these are the things, things like this, you definitely want to call attention to and like research a little bit more. And especially if you know that you didn't apply to be in a sweepstakes or, you know, you didn't fill out any information. Um, Again, you just want to be uh, leery and suspicious and be suspect of those types of things before you buy into them. Um, and then overpayments is another one that we've seen where people will buy something from you online and accidentally send you too much money. I, I would hate to accidentally send somebody too much money. <laughs> um, they accidentally send you too much money and they ask you to refund them the balance. But sometimes we've seen where they people will tap into your account transfer money out of your account to like uh, take an excess amount of your money and move it to your checking account from your savings account and then tell you, oh, we deposited that money into your account, but we sent you too much. Can you just send us back that $4,000 that we put into your checking account that we didn't owe you? We need you to send us that back. You didn't send money back. That was your money in the get jump. They stole the money from you, put it in a different account and made it look like they paid you. They did not in fact pay you. They you know, took your money and then made you send it to them. So there's a lot of things that um, scam artists are really good at doing. And so we just want to call your attention to some of those things. Anything you want to add, Taylor? Um, I have uh, had a situation with the car wrap decals. Um, one of my members came in and he brought this check and it, it looked fraudulent. Normally you can like see the details on it, but they paid him before his car was even wrapped. You're not going to get paid before you do the job. Um, and they wanted him to let him know, let them know when it was deposited, they wanted him to either deposit it to the ATM or do the mobile deposit, but the amount was too much. He couldn't do the mobile deposit. So when he came in and I seen it, I was like, this is not good. And he said, I had a feeling. So if you have a bad feeling, go with that feeling. You, your gut is right. So just go with that feeling and don't deposit that into your account. Go with your gut. So how to avoid a fake check scam. Um, you know, never use money from a check to send gift cards or money orders or wire money to strangers or someone you just met. Um, 
a lot of times these money, <clears throat> money scammers, they will demand that you send the money through a wire or a transfer or buy gift cards to send them and send them the PIN numbers. That's all really weird. You know, you should like realize that that's strange and unusual and it's probably something else that's going on. So um, don't participate in stuff like that. Toss those offers that ask you to pay for a prize. If I win something, like I need to win it. I don't want to have to pay you for it. You know, I don't have to pay you to get my prize. Um, and don't accept the check for more than the selling price. You can bet that that's a scam. All right. And so why do these scams work? So like Taylor said earlier, the scams work because fake checks gener generally can look like real checks, even to the most seasoned employees. They're often printed with the names and addresses of legitimate financial institutions. Um, they may even be real checks written on bank accounts that belong to identity theft victims, um, which is really sad. Um, and it can take weeks for a bank or credit union to figure out that a check is actually fake. Because sometimes those checks are, they're real checks that they've stolen from other people and written checks out, you know, so now you got an identity theft victim being further victimized and now they're trying to victimize you. Um, so, um, you know, they, they're really sophisticated, like I said, um, with their strategies and the techniques that they use because they want to convince you. So they're sometimes they're going to be you have to be really intricate in like reading the details, reading how the letters and the wording is printed. You know, sometimes the language is off. It's not professionally written. Um, it may even not be professionally printed. Uh, phone numbers are weird. You know, uh, email addresses are, don't work. So a lot of things that you have to be vigilant about in order to protect yourself. And it may take a little time, but it's worth it in the end. These are just um, some images of checks that I pulled from online that actually look like real checks. And they're written, they're written, they're written from, uh, on, from real banks. So you have U.S. Bank and uh, Word Forest National Bank. So actually, the Word Forest is probably Wood Forest. <laughs> Um, so, you know, like little things like that, what you would call so would, would potentially catch someone's attention or not catch someone's attention because it's just like one letter off. Um, but it looks like for the most part, a real check and look, they send it in a priority envelope. So it's gotta be real, right? No. <laughs> so they do these things to try to trick you. Um, but the checks a lot of times will look like real checks. Um, but again, by the time that you know, we've run it and figured out that, you know, it's fraud. The money's already gone out of your account. You know, they've already, they've taken the money out of your account. And so now you owe the credit union or the bank that money because it looks like you gave us a bad check. Um, so you don't want to get involved in those types of things. And the um, word for is National Bank, another little trick. If you see the two signatures, one's like actually written on there and the other one is printed. So that's, I know, like she was, um, like was saying that the fonts are different. Uh, that's just another trick you can look at too. But you know that when they are, when when they're sending these things out, you know, and for people who are not, you know, vigilant about it or even like, you know, thinking about that this could be fraud, this would be very enticing to people. Right. You know, and people would get excited. Oh, I got my twenty three hundred dollar check, or I got my 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 four hundred dollars, or my two hundred dollar check came in from wherever. You know, and people don't think that they just get excited because it's money. So that's why they appeal to you through, through your emotion, through finances, because they know that that gets people excited, you know. Um, so you don't take the time to look at the signatures on the check. I mean, who cares? You know, it's a, ooh, it's a check from a bank. Um, and so they use those sophisticated tactics to get you involved in their scheme and their scam and then take advantage of you and take advantage of your account, your credit and all kinds of things like that. So um, the bigger problem with these fake check uh, scams is that, so by law, we as a financial institution, we have to make your funds available to you in a reasonable amount of time. And so even though we may say that the check has cleared, that doesn't mean it's a good check. Because um, by the time the check clears, they've already taken that money out of your account. So um, the scammers have already, the money that, uh, by the time the scammer has any money you sent, you're stuck having to pay that money back to the bank. So, and when it's gone, it's gone. So um, a lot of time there is nothing that you can do, you know, cause at this point it looks like, you know, you were involved in it. You knew you, that's why we tell you don't send money to people you don't know. 
you know, don't go out and buy gift cards. Somebody asks you to buy $2,000 worth of gift cards. Now, come on, $2,000 worth of random gift cards, you know, and, they'll, and a lot of times with these um, sophisticated tactics, they'll tell you where to go. Go to the local CVS, go to, go to the Walgreens right here because they've already done their research. They tell you what kind of gift card to buy. Um, because they know what's going to work. They know the ones that have pin numbers on the back. They, and that's what they want. They want those pin numbers. Um, so they'll tell you exactly where to go. And they want these tr these um, transactions to happen quickly so that they don't get caught and that they can get the money really quick. And then you'll be out. Once they're done, and you're, it's you to deal with the mess. You know, They'll disappear forever, but they've already taken your money. They've already scammed you, frauded you. And now it's your problem. So um, we don't want our members we don't want anybody to get involved in anything like that. So we try to um, to uh, educate you, give you some of these tips ahead of time so that you don't get involved and become part of such a terrible, terrible thing that is happening. It's getting more sophisticated. Look like as the days go on. Um, don't rely on money from a check unless you know and trust the person you're dealing with. And this check says, pay to the order of some sucker. <laughs> That's the whole mindset behind it. That's what they think of. That's what they think of you when they're, you know, writing, sending you these checks. They think that, oh, they're going to cash this check. You know, it's five hundred dollars. Oh, yeah, they're going to cash it. Um, I actually had um, and I always say, you know, just take the extra time, make a phone call. You know, I had a check earlier this year that came to me from um, the dealership where I purchased my vehicle. And it was a random check. I probably shouldn't tell you my business. Nine hundred dollars. It was a $900 and some odd cent check that came in. And I said, well, why are they sending me this money back? Like, why my car, I bought my car in December. Like, why are they sending me a check for $900? And it said a refund. And I was really leery. I was excited. <laughs> Even though I know that fraud and scams exist, I was excited to say, I got a check for like $900. It's almost $1,000. Like, woo. But why? So I took the step and I called the dealership or the company who owns the dealership. And I said, hey, I got a check that says blah, 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 blah. And the amount of whatever, like, did you guys send this? And what they said was, yes, we sent it. It was a refund on a rebate that you qualified for when you purchased your car that was not applied to your, um, your purchase at the time. We wanted to do the right thing and send you back some money that you could have, that could have came off your selling price of your car. How nice of them, right? But and then I hurry up and I cash the check. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure that that money, because it was, I mean, how often do you just get a check in the mail for, you know, almost a thousand dollars, you know? Um, and I know I bought my car going on almost a year ago. So um, I did, you know, I did throw up a red flag, but I wanted it to work out too. <laughs> I really <laughs> wanted it to be good. So, um, but I just took the step and I called. I called my dealership. Uh, and the company that the the headquarter company basically and said, hey, you know, hey, is this just something that y'all sent to me? And it was legit. So make sure that if you get something in the mail, you know, don't call the number on the check that you receive. Call the actual company. Look up the actual company that it's from and call the phone number that you get for the actual company. So you don't want to call the number on the check or on the paperwork that they send because that could be the number to the people who are frauding you or or not but you want to look up the legitimate phone number or a website, whatever, go to them. And again, you can also look them up and just add the word scam or re, uh, scam or review or um, fraud after the, the state, you know, the name that you're looking up and then you'll see if something comes up. So um, always inspect, you know, inspect your, those type of things first. Romance scams are also something that we see a lot here at the credit union. Um, I call these 90 day fiance scams. <laughs> so, um, used to be my favorite TV show to watch. Um, so basically this kind of starts where you, um, again, it's appealing to your emotion. Um, you get into a relationship with someone or someone, you know, um, reaches out to you over a dating site or a social media site, wants to get to know you more. They may say that they live overseas or in the military overseas. You know, they're there for working for business um, for a prolonged period of time. The love interest progresses quickly. 
um, you know, and suddenly they are in love with you and they've never met someone so fabulous and so amazing and so loving as you. <laughs> and they just can't wait to move forward with you. They want to start a life with you. You know, all this happens like back to back to back to back to back. And by the way, they need you to send them some money because they have all these something, something's come up with their family. Something, uh, an unexpected bill has come up. They have to have surgery. All of a sudden, um, they need money. And so now that they've appealed to your heart and they've earned your trust and your uh, your love, you know, they now they start to ask for money. I, you love me. I love you. So send me money. Not, that is a romance scam. Um, and we've seen some very, very sophisticated ones come through, um, you know, where the person, they believe that the person is coming. They're flying in today. They're going to meet them at the airport. They're about to get married. Customs has them. They needed to get them out of customs. Somebody calls them and says, yeah, we're holding your boyfriend or your girlfriend here and you got to pay us to get them out of customs, all kind of things. You would not believe. <laughs> so, um, you know, just again, be very leery. We're not saying that you can't meet a wonderful person overseas and have a very healthy marriage uh, relationship, whatever, but be leery if they start asking you for money. Um, really quickly <clears throat> or their relationship seems to like advance really fast suddenly they have all these bills and you know they need your help and they love you so much and you've never seen them they can't you know they don't send you a picture of who they are or they send you a picture and it's not doesn't match the name and just do your research you know um so uh these are definitely real they happen more often than um you would think and sometimes, you know, they they try to, they prey on uh, seasoned folks. They prey on young folks. They prey on all folks, you know. Um, <clears throat> anybody that they can, they feel that they can scam, you know, um, by appealing to their emotion, if appealing to their heart, they'll tell you what you, what you want to hear, you know, in order to gain your trust. And uh, again, once that money is gone, it's gone and a lot of times, you know, I was talking to Taylor about this before we got on, you know, um, our member service reps are, 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 they're trained to ask questions, you know, and again, in the credit union, we try to develop relationships with our members, you know, and we kind of try to know your, uh, you know, what's common for you, and we might ask, you know, how things are going, <clears throat> you may tell us you have a son in college, or, you know, we know what your business is, and we talk, you know, have small talk when you come in. Um, we're taking note of that information because when something different happens or some out of the ordinary thing happens, we can say, hey, Mr. John, you know, hey, well, I thought you said da 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 you know, or, hey, you know, is your daughter, does your daughter know about this or does your whatever know about this? to try to help you because sometimes we can be blindsided, um, you know, or, hey, where did you get that check from, you know, and sometimes you may feel like, well, why do y'all have to know where I got this check from? We don't want to know for our personal reasons. We want to know to protect. So we may just, you know, help you call attention to things that you may not necessarily realize, you know, and are red flags that you may have missed. And we don't want to get you, we don't want you to get caught up in these things. So we may ask you questions, um, you know, about, you know, where that money come from and who asked you to send them that money? How long have you known that person? Are you expecting this check? Yeah, um, were you expecting it? Um, you know, and just kind of ask you some questions. And it's just to kind of help us determine, like, you know, to try to not put, help you stay out of a situation that could be really bad for you. Um, and we've had, you know, members come in and they get really upset with us because they're they're convinced that my fiance is coming from Timbuktu. He's coming. He's on the plane right now. I have to be at the airport to get him. They are calling and saying they're not going to let him, they're not going to release him without this amount of money. I have to send this money, this X amount of thousands of dollars, you know, and we're like saying, ma'am, ma'am, <laughs> do you hear yourself? You know, we may say, you know, try to backtrack, tell us a little bit more. Um, and it's not to hurt you. It's not to hurt your feelings. It's not to break up a happy relationship, relationship, um, but it's just to kind of help keep your money safe because we would hate to see you lose two, three, four, five, ten thousand um, dollars. And a lot of times it's upwards of a lot of money that people lose um, in romance scams. So um, anything you want to add? Um, no, I have seen two situations where this has happened, though. And um, 
sadly, one of the ladies thought that her fiance was um, a victim of the fraud too. So she thought he was still coming, um, even though he was the fraud person. So it is a very sad situation to deal with. Um, so just please be sure you're, you are watching because it is sad for us. <laughs> yeah, it's sad because we don't want to see that happen to you. Right. And sometimes you know, you, people cry because they feel like we're right. stopping them from having a happy relationship. And it's like, no, no, we want you to be happy. We just don't want you to be broke. Right. <laughs> All right. So avoid the hook. Check it out. Look up the website or the phone number for the company or the person who's contacting you. Call that company or, or that person directly. Use a number you know to be correct, not the number on the email or the text or the check or whatever. Um, and tell them about the message that you got or tell them about the letter you received. So it's kind of what I was saying about, you know, calling the company first and then, hey, did you send this? Or, hey, I received this. Is this really you guys? Um, four signs that it's a scam. Scammers pretend to be from an organization that you know. So they will, you know, I got an email the other day that said it was from USPS and it said your package is being sent back because of undeliverable address. And I'm like, what? What package, you know? And so I went to, I started Googling like, you know, USPS scam, your package is being returned. It's like to click this link. Well, if I click that link, I probably would have like, you know, some some kind of um, virus or something could have gotten on my computer. Um, people can take control over your computer. Uh, your computer, they can remote in from your computer. Sometimes, if you click links, you're basically giving them access to your computer. Uh, we've heard about that happening as well, where people will. I've had people call me from Microsoft before and say, "Oh, your computer is sending out these viruses." You have to install this on your computer in order to stop the viruses from spreading, uh, you know, and I'm like, oh, OK, I'm headed there now to take care of that. Uh, <laughs> um, so, you know, they're going to say something that makes you feel like, oh, it's urgent. I need to attend to this. Um, oh, a package is being sent back. You know, oh, I, I get packages in the mail all the time. So I'm like, what did I order? They're sending back my products, my hair products. Oh, let me <laughs> click the link, you know. Um, so they try to appeal to you, you know, and it looked like a legitimate email and I clicked the USPS thing and it was like, it actually, one of the, the, the address like didn't spell out the U S postal correctly. So I was like, mm, this seems weird. Let me go ahead and Google. And I did. And so I found out that that's a common scam that they're doing. Um, they even now, uh, which I get a lot of uh, like that robo calling stuff where they call you from phone numbers that appear to be legitimate or appear to be from cities, you know, that you're associated with or that, you know, um, local phone numbers. And then you get on the phone and they're like trying to sell you a warranty or they're telling you about, you know, your Medicaid or, you know, whatever. They're telling you about stuff that you have no interest in, you are not tied to, um, you know, just all kind of things like that, just to like, keep you on the phone and then try to sell you stuff. Um, and they use like really sophisticated, again, phone. I've had my own phone number call me before, like weird, where my, it, I get a call from myself. <laughs> so it's one number off. I'm yeah, like really weird. Um, <laughs> or like it'll be from other countries and things like that. Just really weird stuff. So um, Number two says scammers say there's a problem or a prize. So they try to do two, again, appeal to your emotion. You want a prize or, hey, there's a really important problem that you need to attend to right now. Try to make you feel like it's an emergency and you have to take action on it. Um, they want you to act immediately. So they, um, like I've got a thing that's my phone right now. It's saying spam risk. I don't know if you can see it. It's happening live. It says spam risk. <laughs> um, so I get that all the time. Um, where it's like spam calling you. So, um, but thankfully I have, you know, the, the uh, phone carrier has technology installed to kind of help to mediate those kind of things. You can sign up for like the do not call list. You can get on call blocking software to try to block some of that from coming through or if it comes through, it comes through as spam. So I'm thankful for that. Um, and scammers tell you to pay in a specific way. So like I said earlier, they'll tell you which store to go to, how many gift cards to get, which type of gift card to get, if it's a MoneyGram, if it's a Western Union, they're going to tell you exactly the steps that you need to take, and you have to follow those steps in order for it to work. So um, make sure that you realize that those are not legitimate, that it's part of a scam. Taylor? Um, what you can do to avoid a scam. Block unwanted calls and text messages. Like the one I was just kidding. <laughs> I get the text messages one all the time. I get time. that too. 
Um, take steps to block <clears throat> unwanted calls and to filter unwanted text messages. Um, don't give your personal or financial information in response to a request that you didn't expect. Um, Have you ever had them call you and tell you your social security number's blocked? Like I've had them call yeah, and mm -hmm. say, your social security number has been frozen or it's been blocked. I'm like, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, legitimate organizations won't call, email, or text to ask for your personal information, like your social security number, bank account, or credit card numbers. Nobody's going to ask you for that um, specifically over the phone, you know, and I've even, <clears throat> even when I'm, uh, you know, doing some business, I'll ask, like, is there another way you can verify, you know, who I am without having to me to give you my social security number? Um, so, you know, you want to be protective of those types of things. Um, again, make it hard for people to hurt you, so. Right. Um, if you get an email or text message from a company you do not do business with and you think it's real, it's still best not to click on any links. Yep. Um, definitely contact them, like Makita said earlier. Um, if you don't know the people, why are they emailing you? Absolutely. Um, resist the pressure to act immediately. They're going to try to tell you it's right now. You need to do this urgently. It's right, right now. But do your research first. Call them, um, email them, figure out what's going on before you give them all this information. Um, tell them to say, bank. yeah, say, give me your number. I'm gonna call you right back. Right. <laughs> hey, let me, I'm headed there right now. Give me your phone number. I'm gonna call you when I get there. And if they keep on, no, we have to do this now, now, yeah. now. Uh, hang up. <laughs> hang up immediately. Just, block the number. Yeah, block the number, <laughs> hang up. Um, again, know how scammers tell you, tell you to pay. So again, um, a lot of times they're gonna tell you to go get these gift cards. Like who is gonna call you and tell you to get hundreds and hundreds of dollars in random gift cards to send to them? Um, if it sounds like a scam, it does sound, you know, go with your gut. If it doesn't, if it sounds too good to be true, it is, it probably is, <laughs> um, stop and talk to someone that you trust. So, you know, come by the credit union and just say, Hey, I got this in the mail, what y'all, what y'all think? Yeah, you know, I mean, take that extra step. You'll be thankful that you did, um, call somebody, you know, bring us, bring us the check, bring us whatever, and let us see first. Um, it's better to do that. Do your due diligence. Um, before you deposit anything into your account or you cash anything like that. Um, you know, if, it, if it's great, if it's good, it's all good. You know, if we can help you figure that out, then great. But if we can help you to, we can help stop a scam from happening to you, we want to be able to help you to do that. So, and of course, you can always report it to the FCC, the Better Business Bureau, you know, just make some calls. You know, it's better to know for sure than to be sorry later. So these are some important phone numbers that you may be able to, that you can use with your debit and credit card here at the credit union. These are our lost or stolen debit card and credit card phone numbers, as well as our fraud lines for the credit card and debit card. Um, and also, you know, if you, um, if you get, if you find out that you have fraud on your account, Taylor, tell them what to do. Like a debit on your debit card account, or checking account. If they think that they have a debit card fraud, you definitely want to call one of those two numbers. And once you speak to them and let them know that it is fraud, you'll come in and we'll fill out a fraud packet. We need complete detail of what's going on. Um, I can't just have, oh, I didn't buy anything from Amazon. I need to know, okay, um, I haven't received anything from Amazon in this long. We need complete detail. Yeah. Um, it's like an invest. It's an investigation. So uh, the more information that you can provide um, to help us to determine the fraud and help you um, to, uh, you know, not be further victimized or anything like that, we want to be able to do that for you. So just know that it can be a process, but um, that process, you know, can be coming in first, giving us a call, filling out the paperwork. You know, sometimes law enforcement has to get involved. So know that it is a process and that we're going to do our due diligence as well to protect you and to um, help you not get further or deeper involved in any fraudulent situations. And then we have a, um, a chat system too on our website. So, um, you know, if you, if, you know, if you, you need to get in touch with us immediately or call attention to something, you can always get on and drop a chat. Uh, send us a message and our chat team will let will let you know the steps that you need to do. They may say, hey, we got it here. We're sending them a message. But in the meantime, show up to the come to the credit union so we can get the process started. So our chat feature sometimes is the quickest way um, to get a, a quick response back. Um, and then you can get the next steps for what you need to do. These are some of the phone numbers that are important. We hope that on today um, we have been able to provide you with 
some very important information um, on how you cannot be tricked into fraud and fooled by fraud and instead um, you know, have these tips and these tricks that you can rely on to help you make good decisions um, when you're faced with these really tricky situations um, or these uh, situa yeah, the situations that appear to be a sweet, a, a tr appear to be a sweet deal, but um, in reality can be very um, sucky. So <laughs> uh, they can end really badly. So we just wanna say thank you for allowing us to share today and share this time with you on today. And again, we hope that the information has been useful to you. Yet we also hope that you never have to use it. Um, yes, but if you don't have to use it, you know, you have the tools and the resources to share with somebody else. Um, if you have any questions or any um, comments that you'd like to add, there is a chat feature above. You can drop your chat in or you can drop a question and we will try to answer it for you. Um, again, we want to thank you for being present with us today for another um, episode or installment of Smart Money Moves um, uh, for 2021. And we are thankful again for you being a member of Southwest Louisiana Credit Union. We hope that you will join us again in November for another exciting topic. We hope that you have a wonderful rest of your Thursday and a great weekend ahead. So thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next month. Thank you.